went to Terre de Blix tutorial again in Organia and this time with a Moto 7 Lite from Nova so today we are gonna do a full stall tutorial for those who knows we actually have already done a full stall tutorial in the past but it's been 10 years gliders have evolved and it's now quite important to make an update to that specific tutorial. Over the time, the evolution of gliders have brought gliders with a higher aspect ratio and different brake setup. And right now, even big gliders, lower big gliders, need a specific full stall technique compared to before. Only a few gliders which are coming out of the market can still be stalled the old school way like we were doing in the old school tutorial. So now, we need to adapt what we call a two-stage technique. Do not worry, the two-stage technique is not really harder than a normal stall. It just implies a bit different technique, but it's not harder, it's actually smoother and nicer to execute. All right? Why are we doing the two-stage technique? It's because basically if we do a one-stall stage technique on most of the gliders nowadays, the center is not gonna stall properly and the tips are gonna stall way earlier. So basically the tips are gonna stall and the center is not gonna stall. So I'm gonna stall the glider old school, so I go all the way down. And it. My tip collapse a lot, but my center do not. And it's really unstable. So we try to minimize this technique now in order to really use a two-stage stall which you will see is a lot more stable and a lot nicer to practice. What do we do with the two-stage stall? So basically with the two-stage stall what we are doing is we are breaking strongly in order to make the tip break stall first like I just did. But as soon as the tip are stalling we are slightly releasing the brakes in order to let the tip fly forward a little bit and then we are stalling the glider for real this time and at that moment our center is gonna stall and that's when we are gonna enter the stall for real basically that's how we do a two-stage stall you break one input the tips are stalling you release a bit as soon as the tip are stalling and then you break all the way down again to really stall the glider as soon as the glider is stalling we will get a slight backward surge which is gonna be which is not gonna be that big compared to a normal stall okay because during the two-stage stall the backward surge occurs on the first brake input so first brake input we're gonna have a small backward surge as well and then on the second brake input the glider is gonna be above our head and the backward surge is gonna be quite small so from this backward surge we're gonna wait for the end of this backward surge so we are gonna wait to be really under our glider again and then we are going to release our hand a bit lower than the carabiners when we will have our hands a bit lower than the carabiners we will end up in a pretty stalled backfly position so we'll end up in a backfly position which is quite close and then from this backfly position we are going to try to reopen it to find a nice and clean backfly position for our exit all right what you want when performing the two-stage stall is to really pay attention to when you stall the glider the first time. The common mistakes are usually either to stall the glider strong but then do not release early enough so then the glider is moving too fast backwards and then when you release to in order to make the second input the glider is really stalled already the tips are really stalled and the glider is going to surge forward again. This is usually not dangerous you just get a shoot in the worst case a frontal collapse but usually it's not dangerous another common mistake is to not stall enough on the first input so then the glider is not stalled enough and then your second input is not managing to stall the glider completely so you kind of repeat the same process over and over again you are just making the tip stall you don't stall enough then you release you wait too long you make the tip stall again and it's just moving but it's not really stalling so what you want is to really wait for the tip to stall, release, and then stall it again. All right? Let's try that. I'm breaking rapidly, release, breaking rapidly. Okay? And then I'm in a really close back fly. Okay? Most of the time you don't need to go all the way down for the second brake input. Sometimes you need, sometimes you don't. It's fucking bumpy. So most of the time your hands are not gonna end all the way down, they are gonna end like 
around your rescue handle. So I'm gonna break it. One, two, three. I break hard, release, break hard again. And here I have a really unstable back fly. So I'm gonna try to be open, be open. And here it's stable. You see? If I put my hand too close, it's gonna be a bit more unstable. Here you see it's moving. If I spread them, boom, it's stable again. Alright? It's quite important to always wait until you have a clear appreciation of your actions. In order to exit, I'm just gonna release, 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 and go hand down. Alright? So that was a two stage stall. Alright? We are gonna do it again, of course, and you're gonna try to clean it up as we go. The cleaner you are going to be, the faster you are going to be able to enter a stable backfly position. All right? What you want in the two-stage stall is really to enter the backfly as rapidly as possible. On your first stall, it's going to take a long time. And on your later stall, it's going to come quite early enough. All right? For the backfly exit, what you need to do is basically, as soon as we pass the first difficulty, which is the two-stage stall, we are going to try to find the backfly. Finding the backfly is relatively easy. You just need to keep steady in your body and spread your hand a little bit to not be too close to the risers, okay? Do not grab the risers. You need to be symmetric and release symmetrically, slowly, slowly, slowly to reopen the glider. The mistakes you could do while doing so is basically to reopen too fast and the glider is gonna fly away straight away. You don't want to do that because if you do that, then probably your glider will not be reopened completely and you might get two small cravats on the tips. Another mistake that you could do is to be asymmetric. If you are asymmetric at that point, just lower both your hands to find a lower backfly, but it's gonna be more stable and even if you are asymmetric, it's not gonna show as much. And once you have that lower backfly, just release again higher and higher and try to spread your hands in order to really be comfortable, to really be precise in your actions, all right? Uh, last, last but not least, you could be over-piloting your backfly exit. So basically you could go hands up and maybe think that you went hands up asymmetric or think that maybe you went hands up in the wrong moment, then stay hands up, maybe accept the front collapse that you're gonna get in case you get it, but in most cases you won't even get it as soon as you do not break again. If you keep some brake, the glider is gonna shoot more. And if you try to break it too hard, the glider is gonna stall. Then you're gonna release, blah, blah, blah. And it's called overpiloting. When you release your backfly, it's important to release it symmetrically. Okay, so it's important to release both hands at the same time. That being said, if you do not release both hands at the same time, do not worry. Just stay hands up. If you stay hands up, the glider is gonna turn slightly in a small spin and it's gonna reopen and just shoot sideways. The sideways shoot is gonna, not gonna be such a big problem and most of the time you will not even get more than a slight tip collapse, all right? Let's do a normal two-stage stall again. So we are gonna watch our glider. So I'm gonna watch you obviously, but you watch your glider. You're gonna watch the glider, make the fast break input, release, and a fast break input. I struggle because I'm struggling and I'm moving really fast so I'm struggling what you want is to not do it. okay as soon as you are in a backfly if you are slightly asymmetric the glider is gonna rotate here the glider is rotating if that's the case I just come back lower and we open my backfly okay so I reopen it reopen it reopen it and the glider search forward and I go hands up so basically I reopen, reopen, reopen and the glider, as soon as I see the glider surging forward, I try to go hands up, okay? Every time I go hands up a bit asymmetric here and you see that's no problem, I just need to stay hands up. If you progress on your stall, then the faster you're gonna be able to enter your backfly. The goal is gonna be to be able to shorten all those steps into one step in itself, okay? First of all, we keep practicing those two stage stalls. In order to clean up your exits, so as I said, during the backfly, you need to wait for the 
glider to surge forward and when the glider surges forward you just go hands up okay if you go hands up asymmetric you stay hands up but it can be sometimes tiring to have to wait for actually that exit so what you want is to be able to create your own exit in order to create your own exit it is very easy what you need to do is to make a slight up and down movement in order to create a slight forward surge so basically you are in back fly okay so you spread your arm and then you release a little bit and break a little bit the hand and release all the way okay so it's like really i release a bit break a little bit and release all the way all really fast and what is going to happen it's going to create a small forward surge which is going to create basically a an exit door which you can take okay so that's what you want to do in order to shorten your waiting time in back flight now that we have performed several stalls we want to shorten them a little bit in order to shorten them a little bit it's quite easy what we want is to find our back fly faster so we can repeat the same process but we know that our back fly position is around here all right it's totally normal it's good with the unwrap our back fly position is around here so what we want is to come back to that position as fast as possible but not too fast because if we come back to that back fly position straight away the glider is gonna shoot forward so what we want is to shorten the way we do things but still identifying each step correctly so we are gonna do a two-stage stall we are gonna come back under our carabiner and rapidly come back to that back fly position okay but we are gonna identify each step Ooh. we are gonna identify I'm it's really bumpy today so that's normal if the glider is moving we are gonna identify each steps just we are not gonna stay in any of them okay until we end up in the back fly all right so despite the turbulences we are gonna do the stall okay i'm stalling releasing stalling and i release okay and quite fast i end up in my back fly position all right then i'm gonna create my own exit release break release all right so you see this works really well you just release break release easy so now let's try to shorten this even more by just doing one input okay you don't need actually the second input if you know what you are doing the second input just is important if you have if you are a beginner but as soon as you are you have a bit more experience you don't need that second input how does that work basically you're gonna stall release a little bit just to let the glider reinflate and stop it above your head in perfect back fly so let's try i'm stalling release and stop it above my head in perfect back fly and then i create my own exit perfect all right let's try this again so i just break release a little bit and stop it above my head you see here i was slightly asymmetric if you are slightly asymmetric you need to not move all right and we can create our own exit release break and release fairly easy no? so yeah, we are gonna review the basic mistakes you could do on a stall of course I'm talking about the basic mistakes and you could do a lot of different mistakes that I didn't think about this is the main mistake that I see people doing during our courses all right first of all many people actually do not uh, stall the glider strong enough so they just break release break release break release and the glider is not stalling so they are like breaking release breaking release breaking release breaking release breaking release okay kind of pumping like for landing this does not work you need to have a steady and strong brake input until the glider stalls and then you release and then you stall it again okay it, you really need to separate all the steps so that they are clear in your head but for the glider as well okay second mistake that people do is that they often release a bit too high for the back fly and then the glider is surging forward so basically they stall release and break 
and the glider is not in bad fly and it just flies. Okay? Another thermal. So what happens here is that they just release, the glider is not in back fly and then they are not they have to release because the glider is not in back fly, it's hard to bring it back. Okay? At that moment it's just better to go hands up because it's over. Alright, then it's better to start over again. Another mistake that people do is that they are gonna release when the glider is behind and then they are gonna relax a strong shoot for obvious reason. I'm not gonna do it because then you have risk of falling into your canopy. I don't want that to happen to me and not for you, that's for sure. All right, and then the rest of the mistakes mostly comes in the backfly. So asymmetry in the backfly, we have seen it when we were working on the backfly and asymmetry on the exit. So the asymmetry on the exit or the overpiloting on the exit is one of the most common mistakes. I'm gonna try to show you. So I'm basically gonna stall the glider, try to create a backfly, and then I'm gonna overpilot my exit. So I stall, I'm in backfly, okay, and then I will release and break again, and you see the glider stalls again, and then I release and I break again, and I don't let the glider time to actually exit, while if I just go stop. glider exits perfectly okay so it's important to always let the glider exit let the glider shoot and then you control the shoot if needs be but in 99% of the case you don't need to all right so lastly people often release their backfly too early so basically the glider is not reopened enough and that's how you might end up with cravats so let's try so of okay. And here, you see, I had the cravat. So basically, I released too early and I had the cravat. Fortunately, in many scenarios, that cravat opens by itself. In some scenarios, you will need specific techniques to reopen that cravat. So that's the end for this tutorial guys. I hope you enjoyed this updated version of the stall. I hope it's not too long and I hope you will have a blast training those stalls. It's a really important maneuver in a pilot's career and I think that it's really important for all of you guys to practice it because it can really make you safer with your glider. Mm -hmm.